here this evening. I appreciate your presence and appreciate the opportunity to direct our minds this evening in, in a study of God's Word. We want to do our best to talk about this topic that has been announced on our flyers as a part of this series. We want to do our, our best to talk about this in ways that are practical Whomever you are, as long as you have a, a living parent, and there are many, many, many of you in this audience, some at the age of six, some at the age of 16, some at the age of 60, who still have parents who are alive. That is a blessing. And we want to talk about things that have to do with life as children if you do not have a parent that is alive, undoubtedly there are, are things from our study this evening, from our, our delving into God's Word, still principles there that we can all learn from as a family. It is a very great blessing and privilege that even though we have many different family backgrounds represented here, we have blessings and and we have heartbreaks represented here. We have very good memories and we have very difficult memories represented in this family. But it is a blessing that we are not walking through life alone. We have brothers and sisters in Christ of all different age groups that are a part of this family. And God has something to say about that. Not only our relationship to Him as Heavenly Father, but our relationship to each other. And so we want to, to look into the wisdom that God provides as our ultimate guide. Would you begin reading with me in Ecclesiastes 12 and the first verse of the chapter where this wise man says in verse 1, Remember also your Creator. Remember your Creator. In the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say I have no pleasure in them there are some very real difficult aspects of aging that God in his word does not sugarcoat he seeks to be real with us he seeks to inform us ahead of time and seeks to encourage us to remember Him before those difficult days draw near. In the language of verse 2, before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and He's poetically, figuratively going to talk about what it's like as our bodies age. We have parts of our bodies that begin to tremble naturally as we grow old and the strong men are bent. And the grinders, our teeth cease because they are few. And those who look through the windows, our, our eyes grow to be much more dim than they used to be. We're not able to see as well. And the doors are shut on the street. When the sound of the grinding is low and one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high and terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms. When almond trees blossom, they turn white. We see that as our bodies age. The grasshopper drags itself along and desire fails because man is going to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets before the silver cord is snapped. Life is not always going to be like it is right now, young person. God in His Word is telling us. And so you remember your Creator before these days, before the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the cistern and eventually the dust, we were taken out of dust and to dust we will return. The dust returns to the earth as it was and the Spirit returns to God who gave it. Remember 
your creator in the days of your youth. It is not easy in the days of our youth. Let's turn in our Bibles back to the book of Ephesians in the New Testament. Back to Ephesians chapter 6. It is not easy being a young person. Perhaps more than in any age, people are judged by their intelligence, but especially their looks and their money. It is not easy being a young person. In today's secular society, it is not easy learning that mom and dad are not perfect. That mom and dad make mistakes. And I want to do my best this evening to, in a sense, stand in a gap. Those of you who are, are, are very young. My oldest daughter, Chloe, just turned 10 today. And, and I have in, in mind those of you who are 8, 9, 10, 11... 12 years of age, I, I would encourage you to pay very, very close attention this evening. And those of you who are in your early teenage years or, or your later teenage years, I remember it, it wasn't all that long ago. I remember what that's like. But I'm not a teenager anymore. I, I'm, I'm in this odd nether world where I fear, feel very young, but my oldest daughter turned double digits today, and, and, and that's hard for me to believe. I, I, I'm not a teenager anymore, and I, I'm not even in my 20s anymore. But I'm a parent, and so I feel like I'm right there in the middle. Those of you who are young, we, we want to talk very plainly this evening and, and, and very clearly to the best of our ability about some things that I know because I've, I've, I've been there. And, and there are so many people in this audience who know because they've been there. The road that you are on is not a new road. And there are a great many people here who could advise you as to how life would be so much easier if you would just listen to some of the wisdom in God's book. Of course, in any study like this, we, we go back and we really begin in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1 where the Apostle Paul, this is in God's Word, very young person, this is not just something that your parents think you ought to do. This is what God said. God, in a very real sense, is speaking to you. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve-year-old child, young adult, early teenager, late teenager. God is speaking to you this evening through this book as he says in Ephesians 6 and verse 1, Children, obey your parents. God cares about that. Obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Many of you have learned from very, very young ages that long ago in the days of Moses, God delivered ten great commandments. And the first of those ten have all to do with me and my relationship with God. God said there are to be no other gods before me. I come first. And God said there are to be no idols. You don't make anything to worship. Whatever you own, you don't put that before me. Whatever you find, you don't put that before me. Whatever you achieve, you don't put that before me. I and I alone come first. And He said you be careful about how you talk about me. 
You be careful about how you use my holy name. Young people, it is so prevalent all around you to hear God's name taken in vain, to hear God's name used to, to, to express excitement or, or frustration, and it has nothing to do with God, just using God's name in a way that we would use any other word. And even the acronyms that we use on our phones and on Facebook, OMG does not mean O oh, Majestic God. That does not praise God by the way that I'm talking. Let's be careful how we use God's holy name. God cares about that. And God cares about remembering what He has instituted when it comes to, to worshiping and serving Him. The first of those four Ten Commandments have to do with my relationship with God. And then there's a fifth commandment that's almost like a hinge for the other one. It comes right there in the middle. Honor your father and your mother. And there are others, five others that have to do with the way I treat other people. I'm not to murder other people. I'm not to try and hurt other people. And I'm to respect marriage and to recognize that there are some things God has reserved just for marriage. And young person, as your parents or your grandparents or Bible class teachers or whomever it is, talks to you about sexuality and about respecting what God has delivered, you listen because that matters to God. And God tells us, don't steal and don't lie. God cares about that. God sees and God hears and God knows the way I'm using my mouth. And He tells me not to covet other people's things, to be content with what I have and to recognize there are always going to be people in this life who have more than me. And that's okay. My greatest goal is not to have everything else that everybody else has, but to be thankful for what God has given me. What I would encourage you to remember and to recognize is that fifth commandment is right there in the middle. And I would suggest to you it's there for a reason. Honor your father and your mother. Why? Because the more I learn to honor mom and dad, I learn to honor God. I live with mom and dad. I see mom and dad every day as, as a young person. And I don't see God with my physical eyes every day. But God has given me parents and grandparents and older people who care about me in my life so that I might learn what it means to respect other people who are bigger and more important and know more than I do. The more I learn about respecting and honoring mom and dad, I, I learn what it is to respect and honor and obey God. And the more I learn to respect mom and dad, the more I learn to respect other people. There are real life people in this room who will tell you about how difficult it is in trying to teach young people who don't respect teachers because they don't respect mom and dad. If a child routinely defies and successfully stands up against mom and dad, what possible hope do teachers have in school or in Bible classes? And eventually you're going to grow up in one way or another, you're going to learn that the hard way. That you've got to honor and respect other people. You're, you're one day going to have to honor and respect your employer. And if you're in the habit of trying to get your way by pouting and by manipulating, eventually that's going to have a bearing on how you interact with the person you marry. If I get by for the first 18 years of my life with pouting and manipulating, what sort of baggage am I going to carry into marriage? And what sort of baggage is that going to, 
to, to hinder in my relationship with God. God cares how I act. And he qualifies this in, in two basic ways. In Ephesians chapter 6 and, and the first verse of the chapter, as we talk about these preteen years, Ephesians 6 and verse 1, qualifier number 1 is children. There is a time in life I come to a point when I strike out on my own and I'm no longer under the oversight of mom and dad. But while I'm under their oversight, I obey them and I honor them. Qualifier number two is I, I obey them in the Lord. Sometimes, young person, there will be people who try to get you to do wrong things and God says you don't lie for anybody you, you don't steal for anybody if someone is trying to stand between you and obedience to the gospel you obey God but as long as mom and dad are standing on the right foundation and doing what God would have them to do and, and, and admitting where they've made mistakes and doing their best to, to point you in the direction of God, you obey them. You honor them. Paul said it this way in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 20. And don't just read over this. Maybe you've heard this before and, and sometimes we read things so many times that the real effect and the weight of it is lost on us. God in Colossians 3 and verse 20 says, Children, those of you who are children, are you listening to me this evening? Children, God says you obey your parents in everything. For this pleases the Lord. We turn in our Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 1. We, re we visited this a few weeks ago in talking about the darkness that human beings find themselves in when they turn away from God. And there are all sorts of ugly things in Romans chapter 1. We ought to be ashamed. We ought to be repulsed at some of the things that we find there. Paul summarizes it for us in Romans 1 and verse 28. People who don't want to acknowledge that God is there, that, that God has a will for their lives. And so God gives them up to a debased mind. They use their minds in a way that don't honor God. And so as a result, they're, they're not honoring God with their bodies and the way that they live their lives. They're doing things that should not be done. And the question is, how do I get to that point? What do I do where God would look at me and say, that's not all right? In verse 29, he says, they were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They were full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil. And some of you who are very young and listening to me may not even understand what all of those words mean, but you get the idea that they're not good words. God isn't proud of the way those people are living their lives. I want you to see that right there in the middle of that list, God says, being disobedient to your parents. Right there in the middle of that pit of ugliness and sin is the idea of being disobedient to your parents. Young person, listen to me. Those of you who aren't even teenagers yet, listen to me. God cares about how you live and about how you interact with your parents. And, and so as, as someone who's been there, who knows, could I give you just three basic things that would make your life so much easier if you would just listen to the wisdom that God in His Word has delivered? Could I encourage you not just to do what your parents tell you to do, but to do what your parents tell you to do when they tell you to do it? 
If mom or dad or your grandmother or your grandfather or, or some Bible class teacher or whomever it is tells you to do something, you do that. Because here's reality. Eventually, you're going to do it anyway. They're bigger than you, and, and they can take things away to motivate you. And, and one way or another, you're going to do it. And life would be so much easier if when you're told to do something, you would do it right then. God, in Colossians chapter 3, says, You obey your parents in everything. We've all seen, those of us who are older, have seen the game that plenty of children have trained their parents to play. Maybe you've seen the mother in Target or Walmart who is interacting with their child and she says, stop, 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 stop stop, and I'm going to count to three and if I get to three it's going to be bad. One, two, now listen, you better stop because if I get to three it's going to be bad. One, two, and two and a half and you really need to listen because it's going to get bad if you don't. Children figure out pretty quickly how far they can push their parents. Young person, could I encourage you to recognize this evening God cares how you act. And when your parents tell you to do something, you do it. You do it when they tell you to do it. And if we open our Bibles to the book of Philippians chapter 2 and the 14th verse of the chapter, could I encourage you, young person, not even at, at the teenage level yet, could I encourage you to follow instructions without complaining? Did you know that God cares about complaining? That God doesn't like complaining? And we all know what that is. We all hear that even in ourselves. Those of us who are, are, are very, very young. But mom, it's not my turn and that's not fair. And, and, and whatever it is that fills, whatever it is that I first say after I'm told to do something. Did you know God says don't complain? In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14, he tells his people, do all things without grumbling, or complaining, or questioning. As a young person, I don't have to have the answer to why. Why? Because my mom or my dad told me to. They told me to do this, or they told me not to do it. And how much easier your life would be if you would learn and apply this week at home. Your parents would notice. They would be so very proud of you if you did what they told you to do when they told you to do it, and you didn't complain, and what you do, you do with all your might. We read this kind of language in the Bible. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, we read it today, where God, through Moses, is talking to the descendants of Abraham and says, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. How very proud your parents and God would be, young person, if when you are told to do something, you do it with all your might. Your mom comes in and she tells you that you need to clean your room and she walks away. And you don't just throw all of the stuff under the bed and into the closet where if the door opens, it's all going to come down. Listen, eventually you're going to have to redo all of that. Do the right thing in the right way when you're told to do it. God cares about that kind of thing. Let's open our Bibles back to Ephesians chapter 6. What about those uh, of our family who are in the early teenage years? Could I encourage you as someone who very much remembers where you are, some basic things that would make your life so much easier? brings so much harmony in the home and I know that 
maybe that doesn't seem like it means that much to you. But if there's harmony at home, how much easier and more pleasant life really is. God did not intend that the home would be a war zone. And if you want to do your part in living up to God's expectations, could I encourage you to remember this week, early teenage young man or woman, as much as you want respect, and we all want that at, at, at that age, we want mom and dad and other people to respect what we think and how we feel and what we want to do and what we think is right and what we think is fair. But as much as you want respect, your parents want and they deserve respect. And the more respect you show them, it's funny how this works, the more respect you are shown. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. There are some of you right here in, in this age group this evening. Could I encourage you this week to think about how you talk to your mom and dad? Your words and your tone and your reactions matter. You are to honor mom and dad by the way that you talk. And could I encourage you to recognize that they're saying some things that you really should listen to? All over the book of Proverbs, we, we noted some of them this morning. My son, keep your father's commandments and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Why? Because they've been down this road. They've got some mileage on the odometer. They, they know where you are. They've been there. And guess what? They've got more experience and they've made more mistakes and good decisions and bad decisions. And more often than we would like to admit, they know what they're talking about. Could I encourage you to honor them by the way that you talk and the way that you interact with them? We turn in our Bibles back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 where we'll be in just a moment. Young person, there are some things that God expects your parents to be concerned about. I have yet to meet the parents who plot and scheme late at night how in the world they're going to make their teenagers miserable. Sometimes we believe that. But recognize that God expects, if your parents are going to be pleasing to God, God expects them to be concerned about some of the aspects of your life. And when they express that concern, they are simply doing it as those who have been given the gift of you by God. God expects your parents to be concerned about and to talk to you about the habits that you see developing. Long ago in the Old Testament, God in a different context said, As your days, so shall your strength be. The longer your days go, the, the, the greater your strength becomes. What we spend our days in doing, we, we gradually become good at and we become proficient at and, and we become able to talk about that with other people. We perform habits the way that we spend our time. And young person, it, if your parents aren't concerned about your habits, they're not doing God's will. And so as they express concern and they talk to you about the habits and the priorities that you have, and sometimes the importance of saying no, even to things that aren't inherently wrong, Parents understand what it's like to have lots of good options and to have to be willing to say no to some things so that the most important things don't get choked out. Parents are told by God to be concerned about and to talk with you about the people you spend your time with. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33, your parents didn't come up with this. This is God who said bad company ruins good morals. And could I encourage you as a young person to recognize 
your parents, if you are blessed with parents, moms and dads who love and serve God to the best of their ability, recognize if you're 13, 14, 15 years of age, they have spent years in trying to help you develop good morals. And they recognize that in moments, those years worth of hard, loving work can be completely blown away by the people you choose to spend time with. God says, don't be deceived. The people you spend time with matter. God expects your parents to be concerned about and to talk with you about the person you will choose to marry. Why? Because they've seen, maybe they've experienced the hard way or they've seen in so many other people the impact that that choice can have. And even though you don't see it right now and even though you feel like this might be the one and you're in love and they just don't understand they do understand. They've been there. And they've seen the terrible cost when God's children marry children of the devil. Your parents care. We turn in our Bibles back to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 where we will be in just a moment. What about those of you who are in... in the, the later teenage years. Realize 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old, whomever you are, realize that your parents still have your best interest at heart. Even though you're growing and you're maturing and you're, you're stepping out on your own and you're experiencing freedom that you've never experienced, Realize that your parents have the same best interest for you now at heart as they did when you were six months old. When issues arise, young person, could I encourage you to deal with the issues at hand? It is so easy as a young person when mom and dad and, and teenager aren't seeing eye to eye to, to talk about the past and to talk about what life will be like down the line and to talk about what life is like in other people's households. And this is what this friend is able to do. And this is the freedom that this friend has. And this is how late this friend is able to stay out. And this is what this friend was able to be engaged in. But your parents aren't their parents. They're your parents. And they have your best interest at heart. And the past is the past. And we all make mistakes. And the future will be the future. And as long as you continue to grow and mature, there will be more and more and more opportunities. But what you're able to do at 16 is not what you're able to do at 18. Because you're 16. And your parents understand that. Could I encourage you to recognize that you would save so much heartache if you would discuss matters truthfully and honestly with mom and dad? To recognize that if you don't, trust can take years and years and years to build and can be shattered in one night. And that then it's easy to complain and gripe and rationalize and point to other people. But that trust that you had and your parents had has been completely obliterated by a foolish choice. And we all make mistakes. And recognize that your parents are going to hold you accountable for that for your good. So that you continue to learn there are consequences for your actions. Because if they don't, listen to me, if they don't, one way or another, you will learn that lesson if you live long enough. Whether it's enforced by the government or in prison or whatever it is, you will learn that the hard way. That there are accountabilities for our actions. There, there are repercussions for the freedom that we exercise. Could I encourage you to be open and honest when you make a mistake, not to hide it. It'll come out. I'm telling you from experience, it'll come out. 
And if you would own up to it now, how much easier it would be. Those of you 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, seriously dedicate yourself to the goal of maturity. We've got our Bibles open there to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the 11th verse of the chapter where Paul reasons that when I was a child, I, I acted a certain way. I, I talked like a child. And I thought like a child. And I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish ways. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old. You want to have the relationship with your parents that God intends you to have? Dedicate yourself to the goal of maturity. And don't be shocked when your parents don't treat you as a mature adult when you act and talk and reason and react like a child. They didn't come up with that. God came up with that. Very quickly, let's go back to the book of Leviticus chapter 19. Those of us who are adults, God still cares. It's remarkable how all over God's book, He talks about our adult years as our parents age and that we still, even though we are out of their house, away from their home, that we still have a responsibility to those who are older. In Leviticus chapter 19, for instance, in verse 32, God said, this is God, you shall stand up before the gray head and honor the face of an old man. And you shall fear your God. Don't talk about how much you fear God when you don't respect those who are older. I am the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 23, in the 22nd verse of the chapter, the wise man says, You listen to your father who gave your life and do not despise your mother when she is old. God says that. God cares about how we as adults treat our fathers and mothers as they grow old. Three basic points from an adult point of view. Point number one, there is a time to leave home. And we're not talking about those who in, in the last couple of years have had to crash for a period of time at home because of tremendous financial hardship or, 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 or the, the losing of a house as a result of a losing of a job. We understand there are extraordinary circumstances and, and mom and dad or grandmother and grandfather, other relatives or close friends are, are able to provide places in, in time of need. There's everything right with that. But recognize God never intended your parents able-bodied man or woman to be your source of income and support. God said in Genesis 2 and verse 24, a man shall leave his father and mother. There is a time to leave home and to work and to work hard the way that we talked about this morning. Point number two, there is a spiritual heritage to be upheld and passed on. God periodically in the Old Testament especially talked about the ancient landmarks. And at times it had nothing uh, to do with, with anything more than, than just physical boundaries of those who, who have land. But, but at times it's, it's more than that. It's, it's deeper than that. It's a respect for what is old and tried and tested. What has stood the test of time what so many of our forefathers worked so hard in the service of God to establish and maintain. Proverbs 22 and verse 28, do not move the ancient landmark that your fathers have set. Recognize, if you're a Christian this evening, how many thousands of people have come before you? And that you are one in a long stream, a, a long spiritual heritage that has now fallen to you to uphold and maintain and pass on. Finally, we turn in our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 4. There is care 
practically speaking, to be provided. For many of us in our adult years, as our parents age, 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 4, this, this is in the Bible. This isn't something that your retirement counselor, your financial advisor came up with. This, this is God who said in 1 Timothy 5 and verse 4, if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them first. Children and grandchildren. Let them learn first to show godliness to their own household and to make some return to their parents. For this is pleasing in the sight of God. How humbling to recognize that if my parents had left me alone at times in my life for a matter of minutes, I wouldn't be here. And it wasn't convenient. And it wasn't always pleasant. And it wasn't easy. And, and at times there were other things that they much rather would have been doing. But they sacrificed for me. And God says, you remember that when you grow older. In Mark chapter 7 and verse 11, there are those who are reasoning that as their parents grow old, you, you know, I can't help you because I've given everything that I have to God. And so what I would be able, eventually I, I had hoped maybe to be able to help you and, and, and age you as you grow old, but, but I can't do that. And, and Jesus says, that's not right. I don't buy that for a moment. And by doing that, by treating those who have come before you in that way, you're making void the Word of God. God cares. It's modeled perhaps most clearly in John chapter 19 when in the midst of so much agony and pain and sorrow, Jesus saw fit to make sure that his mother was going to be provided for. As adults, let's remember that God still has a will for our lives as long as our parents are alive. I appreciate your very, very kind attention this evening. If you will turn in your song books to the song that David has selected, I recognize that there are, are many aspects of this that, that don't directly relate with the, 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 the basics of what I need to do in order to obey the gospel, but hopefully it comes through loud and clear. God cares about our lives, the, the nitty-gritty, everyday, practical aspects of life. And that begins first and foremost with taking care of my sinful past. We referenced this morning from Galatians chapter 3 that it is possible to be a part of God's household. That it's possible to be an heir of God. It's possible to have God as my Father. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And maybe you've been thinking about doing that for quite some time. Why not tonight? There are so many in this audience who would give anything to, to interact once again with a mom or dad who has passed away. We, we experience that in this life. But the greatest regret will be not taking advantage of opportunities just like this to make things right with my heavenly Father. If you're a child of God and, and you know that you're alienated from Him, you know that He does not approve of the way that you've been living your life. And we can be some help or encouragement to you. Would you come to the front while we stand and sing?